Listen. I think I think people people somehow get a skewed view of Tom Brady, um, that he's just a clean cut, does everything right, and never says a bad word to anyone. And we know him to be otherwise. So um, in that moment of him being himself, he says some things, and we return the favor. And if, unfortunately, he apparently didn't remember what he said, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm sure in those moments of him yelling at the ref, he's just saying, good job. You're doing a fantastic job. Keep it up. He was just pretty much saying we were nobodies and that we should come up to him after they got the win. And you, you guys have told him we take that. We should take that pretty well. We should just, ah, cool. We were pretty tall draft him. All right, so uh, Tom Brady allegedly said uh, that they were nobodies and talked to them after the game. Sherman did exactly that. We're choosing sides. Skip Bayless, uh, do you think Brady started it? Hmm. So Stephen A., it's pretty powerful stuff. Richard Sherman has called Tom Brady a liar. He is saying that Tom Brady isn't what he appears to be to a lot of football fans and Brady fans. I have followed Tom Brady closely for a long time. I know a lot of people who know Tom Brady to the point that I feel like I have studied Tom Brady. I don't know what was said or not said on that football field two years ago in Seattle. But I can tell you what Tom's history is. And it is that he responds in kind to trash talk. You know how I'm fond of calling him occasionally Psycho Tom? If, if you press his button, if you rile him up, he will go almost over the edge to fire back at you verbally and with his arm. And Sometimes he just goes a little crazy on the football field. His teammates love it because they, they feed off it, they thrive on it. So what, what he might say in response could be anything. So my gut feeling is, and I don't know, again, I wasn't there, but I'm going to guess that all the Seahawks, which has been their, their MO, their way, I, I'm going to guess they were chirping throughout this game. Just chirping, no, no big deal to them, just their usual talk. You can call it trash talk. You can talk it just game talk. It's the kind of talk they feed off each other. Talk, talk, talking. I just call it chirping. But at some point, I could see Tom Brady getting sick and tired of the chirping and, and calling them effectively a bunch of nobodies, as in, who the heck are you guys to be talking like that? I could see that for sure. So if that's what Richard's talking about, I'm good with that. I just don't think Tom Brady would start it. I don't think he would say, you're a bunch of nobodies, if Seattle didn't open its mouth first in some way, shape, or form. That has never been his history or his M.O. That's just me. I could be wrong about that, but I am fascinated that Richard Sherman has called Tom Brady a liar ahead of playing against Tom Brady in a Super Bowl. Skip Bayless, allow me to take this to another level and just give you some insight into how some of these guys think and where I'm coming from. <clears throat> I'm on the record. I'm a fan of Richard Sherman's. I am not a fan of how he spoke to you last year. He and I had a discussion about that. He knows where I stand with that. You're my man. And I thought he was wrong. And by the way, I had I absolutely that. no problem with how he spoke to me. I, I actually got a kick I know, out but of it. I know, but I did. I, I did. I, I had. I know. It was I, fun. I know you did. Yeah. I know you did. But but I did it. I did it for okay. a different reason that I'll explain to you in the near future. But I let him know that. But that I like Richard Sherman and I respect him, and I think that he is an incredibly valuable individual to the African American community in this I country. I see that this dude, and I, I hear that. More so than more more so than most has the has the ability and the power to change lives for the better. Richard Sherman is a special, special brother. Got it. With that being said, the reason I bring that up, Skip, is because I want to clarify to you, he didn't call Tom Brady a liar. He's saying we lie about Tom Brady. That's the difference. Tom Brady didn't say something and project something and then go out and be a completely different individual. Tom Brady doesn't say much. We all know he's a high-end, ultra-competitive person.
He's very cool, silky smooth, off the field, and on the field, he's an animal. He goes for it, yep. and he's a winner. That's what we know about Tom Brady. Tom Brady didn't deceive anybody. He never does. He just goes about his business. The manner in which he is projected to the masses is what Richard Sherman was alluding to. And that's on us. That's not on Tom Brady. So what he is saying is the Tom Brady that we see on the field is someone entirely different than you guys project to the masses. And what happens? And why is this relevant, Skip? Because it's something that the African-American athlete has religiously complained about, which I'm sure you know because you've been doing this for 40 plus years. You know this better than me. You have black professional athletes that religiously talked about over decades now how their, contempor their white contemporaries are projected mm. to the masses compared to how they're projected. Proof of this, Skip. Tom Brady will talk smack. Tom Brady will go after it. Tom Brady will compete. Blah, 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 blah. All of that's true. He's losing. He's got his head down because he talked, but that particular game he wasn't able to back it up because Seattle wins 24 to 23 last year, Skip. And what imagery do we get? How many still shots have you seen in the last three days alone of Richard Sherman, dreadlocks flying, his mouth open, in his face, looking like the black, non-humble, contentious, rebellious black dude that's in rich, that's in Tom Brady's face. If you are the masses of America, how are you absorbing that? You're absorbing it as Tom Brady being class personified, going home after a loss, and Richard Sherman in his face, lacking humility, being all cantankerous, and all of this other stuff, looking like somebody devoid of humility or anything like that. Well, but we omit all the talking that Tom Brady did that led up to that moment. That is what Richard Sherman is alluding to. That is what he is highlighting. Okay. That is what he is talking about. And I appreciate the fact that he stood before the media yesterday and articulated that because he wasn't really talking about Tom Brady. He's talking about the media and how it chooses to project, project certain people in a certain light and other folks in a different light. Okay, that is very fair and very valid, and I appreciate you putting it in that perspective. But that is the bigger picture perspective here. The smaller picture is that Richard did accuse Tom Brady of starting it. And you, we, we, gotta, we can't leave that completely behind. He said that he, he started it by calling us a bunch of nobodies, that he made, he fired the first shot. Again, is that, it, it, maybe that is true, but that's not Tom's history. And he was going up against a bunch of young ups, upstarts that he knew very little about because, remember, it wasn't last year, it was two years ago. So they were just starting to flex their muscles for the NFL. We were just starting to see who the Seahawks were. I, I get what you're saying about the bigger picture. And by the way, just, just to, to put us in perspective, I have always talked about Psycho Tom on this show. I, I've never tried to, to, to uh, airbrush him in, in any way, shape, or form, because when he's on the field, he, he goes over the edge. So for, on this show, the Tom Brady that gets portrayed is not the aw shucks, humble to a fault Tom Brady that we see off the field after games and during the week. Yeah. The guy on the field, is, is he's way out there, man, and he will say yeah, anything, yeah, 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 and yeah, it gets but, profane. So, yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, we, but that, we have but not that's misportrayed that's, him. No, you haven't misportrayed him. But the point is, we speak of him in a celebratory fashion. Whereas Richard Sherman is articulating that if it was somebody else, that may not have been the case. You know, and so it's, it's not about whether we speak about him uh, or, or highlight what Tom Brady does and doesn't do, or psycho Tom. Skip Bayless, the fact of the matter is, you mean no harm in saying that, whether it be about Richard Sherman or Tom Brady. But everybody's not Skip. You, if somebody calls Tom Brady psycho Tom, it's no problem. You call some of these black athletes psycho, we got a problem. Yeah. And so that's what Richard Sherman is talking about. Okay. And that's the issue. So from a, mi from, from a micro perspective, you're right in terms of what we disseminate and articulate, 
But the bottom line is, is that how it's received in certain segments of our society, okay. it's different. There are different standards for different dudes. And Tom Brady is one of those dudes who benefits from the standard because it is rare that he is perceived or spoken of in a negative light. And Richard Sherman could not get away with the same thing that Tom Brady gets away with. And Richard Sherman went to Stanford. He's educated. He's achieved a lot, and he doesn't get the same privilege. That's the bottom line. I'd like to think that's changing, but but it probably is the bottom line. It's changing. In the oh, no, 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 no. I would never say that. I, okay. I would never. Let me let me say this as a black man to America. We have come a long way. Yeah. We have made a lot of progress, and I would never ever try to imply that we haven't progressed and change for the better has not come, but it still exists to some degree. And that's all Richard Sherman to me was highlighting. And I had no problem with it. I applaud it because I think from an intellectual perspective, he is more than qualified I to agree. make the case that he made. And by the way, he was smiling. He didn't look angry. He wasn't rebellious or cantankerous or anything like that. He just stated it as a point in fact. And I appreciate that. He was right. I have come. Let me finish this off by saying I have come to greatly respect the depth of Richard Sherman's mind and his ability to courageously articulate his deepest thoughts. That, that's what I think. So I respect Amen. that. I'm just Amen. not sure about who started this. I'm just, that that could well, be it, a, it doesn't matter. a great area. It doesn't area. matter. I was yeah. going to say that at the end of the day, maybe it doesn't matter. It that's doesn't matter. Point. Yeah. All it right. doesn't matter. It, it, that wasn't his point. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. All right. Let's leave it there, gentlemen. Coming up after the break, Floyd Mayweather uh, hasn't confirmed whether or not there will be a fight between him and Manny, but someone from his camp uh, says, I'll tell you why there's a holdup on the big fight. That discussion is next. We'll be right back after the break.